Let's compare Fetch and Axios and see who's the winner in 2020. And before we will start, remember to subscribe our channel with the red button down there if you don't do it yet and turn on the notifications and to give us thumbs up and leave a comment. Let's start! Hello everyone! As I mentioned a few seconds ago, today we are going to compare Fetch and Axios and we will see which method is better for HTTP calls in our front-end application. We will compare the most common features like error handling, syntax and some additional also important things that Axios or Fetch provide. And at the end we will try to select the best solution for your next application. Let's start! Okay, so uh, let's start from a brief overview of what Fetch and what Axios actually are and let's take a look on their syntax so we have an idea how they differ from each other. We will start from Fetch. So Fetch is part of a JavaScript window object. So it's built in, we don't have to install it, we don't have to add any additional packages to our project, it's just there. And Fetch allows us to get data from API asynchronously. Right now you can see a piece of code on the screen with the fetch request. It's a simple get request. And in fetch method, we have one mandatory argument, it's URL. So it's the path where, from where we would like to get data. Then it returns a promise, which can resolve with the response object or can reject with error. The second argument in fetch method are options and they are optional. I know how it means, but yeah, that's how it is. Uh, if we won't pass the options, the request is always get and it downloads the content from the given URL. That's it. Inside the options parameters, we can pass methods or headers. So if we would like to use post method or any other, we have to use it with optional array. As I mentioned before, the promise returns the response object and because of that we need to use another method to get a body of the response. There are a few different methods that we can use, depends on the format of the body that we need. So the most popular one is response.json and it converts the response to the JSON. Then we have text method, form date, blob, and array buffer. Right now you can see the next code example with a little bit more advanced method with post, with options object, which defines the method, the headers, and the body, which needs to be stringified. So you might have some overview on how we can use fetch right now. And after that, we can go to the Axios and take a similar look on the overview and the syntax of the other method. So Axios is a JavaScript library for making HTTP requests from Node.js or XML HTTP requests or browsers. As a modern library, it's based on Promise API. Axios has some advantages, like protection against XSRF attack or cancelling requests. To use Axios, we need to install it and import it to our project. It's not a built-in in any JavaScript object and it's totally third-party library. To install it, we can use any of existing CDNs. We can use Node, Yarn, Bower. Now let's take a look at the code example with a simple GET request using Axios. So on the code in the screen, you can see the GET method and simple callback for response and for error. If we would like to use any other method, it's enough to just replace this get 
with, for example, post or delete. Uh, when we are creating a config object, we can define a bunch of properties and the most common are base URL, params, headers, auth and response types. As a response, Axios returns a promise that will resolve with the response object or an error object. In the response object, there are the following values. There is data, which is the actual response body. There is status, so it's the status of the HTTP call, like 200 or 404. There is status text, so it's the text message, like OK, for example, for 200. There are headers that we send, they are sent back. There is a config and the request. Okay, let's take a look at the code example with post method, where you can see that we are passing some data, some options, and we are using dot post. We can also do it in a different way by uh, creating a config object as a variable and pass it to the axios, like you can see right now on the code in the screen. Okay, All right now let's compare how both of these methods work with JSON. So, as I mentioned before, when we are using fetch method, we need to use some kind of a method on the response data. And we are sending the body with the request, we need to stringify the data. Let's take a look at the code with the fetch, and here you can see that with the response, we need to process the response.json action. Uh, let's see how this works with Axios. So, in Axios we pass data in the request or we get data from the response and the data is automatically stringified, so we don't have to use any other methods, uh, no other operations are required. Let's check out the code example with Axios as well. So here you can see that we just need one then and that's it. Okay, right now we can go to error handlings in both methods. Again, let's start from the fetch, which is a little bit more complicated in this case. So, with the fetch method, it's not so easy. Every time we get a response from fetch method, we have to check if the status is success, because even if it's not, we will get the response and the fetch promise won't be resolved only when the request won't be completed. Let's take a look at code example and here you can see the if statement that performs the check and it's, it verifies if the response has the OK status. If it doesn't have that, we need to throw an error. And let's see how it works with Axios which got some more points in, in this example, because with Axios is way easier. So if there will be a bad response like 404, for example, the promise will be rejected and will return the error. So we need to catch an error and that's it. And the promise will be resolved only if everything worked correctly. So let's take a look at the code example with Axios. It's a little bit bigger, but here you can see that if there is a response, we don't need to check anything and only when there is an error, we can check out what kind of error is it. Let's go to the next feature that we are going to compare and it's download progress. So when we are downloading a large amount of data, we would like to have anyway how we can check how many data did we already download so any progress bar or something like that earlier to implement progress indicators developers used xml http requests and on progress callback in fetch and axios it's a little bit different to track progress of download in fetch we can use one of the response body properties readable stream it provides body data chunk by chunk and it allows us to count how much data is consumed in time. 
In case of fetch, implementing a progress indicator is possible as well. And it's even easier because there is an existing module which we can install and implement and it's called Axios Progress Bar. And the last feature we are going to compare right now is HTTP interception. Interception can be important for us when we need to check or change our HTTP request from the application to the server or in the other way, for example, for authentication. In case of fetch, it doesn't provide the HTTP interception by default and the only possibility is to override the fetch method and define what needs to happen during sending the request, but of course it will take more code and can be complicated. And let's check out how Axios is acting here. And with Axios, interception is actually one of the key features. It's built in and we don't have to create any additional code to use it. Let's take a look at the code example of Axios Interceptor. The first one is showing the request interceptor where we can change somehow the config of the request we are sending. And the other one is the response interceptor where we can do whatever we would like with the response before it will be returned. And then we are using our Axios normally like we used to do. I think that's pretty cool, especially with authentication, as I already said. Okay, so let's summarize right now. Uh, this comparison shows that Axios is a better solution in case of the application, where there are a lot of HTTP requests, which needs a good error handling or HTTP interceptions. In the case of a small project with just a few simple API calls, Fetch can be a great solution as well. Also, it's very important to remember that Axis is supported by most browsers and the Node.js environment, and Fetch is supported by most of modern browsers and might have some issue with the older ones. I hope this knowledge will help you to select the best solution for your project. Thanks for watching! And that's all. When we summarized, we've got kind of decision, so I hope that with the knowledge you have right now, you are able to select the best solution, so you are able to choose between Axios and Fetch in your next application. If you like the video and you'll find it useful somehow, remember to give us thumbs up and leave us a comment. Also, if you don't subscribe us yet, remember to do it with the red button down there and remember to follow us on our social media, I'll also post the link below, to find out about the best news, some coupon codes, promos and stuff like that. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!